the opinion count stands at 31,000 to 52. But that's just among the scientists in the public eye. It isn't often that science must play out in the court of public opinion. But global warming has such huge political and economic implications that the first salvos have been fired in that arena. Probably because the first salvos are bad science. Today we will look at the evidence, something science should never forget to do. Much of the consternation revolves around this little molecule, CO2. Animals breathe it out, plants breathe it in, the oceans contain huge quantities of it, coal, oil, and natural gas produce it when burned. But let's focus on just two small questions. Is the earth getting warmer? And what are the effects of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? You would think that there would at least be a consensus on the first question. Is the earth getting warmer? But there is not. Let's look at the evidence to see why this is so. Here is a 3,000 year old plot of sea surface temperatures over a 2 million square mile area of the Atlantic Ocean. As you can see from this plot, the average temperature has varied within a range of 3 degrees Celsius during the past 3,000 years. The medieval period was quite warm, followed by a few fluctuations, followed in turn by another cold period called the Little Ice Age. Finally, the trend for the last few hundred years is one of increasing temperatures as the Earth recovers from the Little Ice Age. But the increase only gets us back to the average temperature for the 3,000 year span. Here is a temperature plot of the contiguous United States for the 127 years ending in 2006. The trend shown here is an increase, but an increase of a mere half degree Celsius per century. This change is so small that if it were to occur inside a room, most people in the room would not notice it. Here is a plot comparing that tiny temperature change to various ranges. It is small when compared to the average temperature fluctuations of the last 3,000 years. But it is minuscule compared to annual seasonal and even day to night fluctuations observed everywhere on Earth. Here is a plot comparing that 127 year temperature record to solar activity for the same period. As you can see, the correlation is unmistakable. The temperature clearly rises and falls according to the output of the sun. Since 2006, it is actually falling. Data from January 2008 show that even the modest half degree or so temperature rise of the past 127 years is now history. This plot shows a precipitous drop in the global temperature between January 2007 and January 2008. Returning us to temperatures comparable to those in 1880, but of course it could go back up next year or not. What about glaciers and ice caps? Aren't they melting? Glaciers and ice caps regularly melt and regrow. Neither process is something to be alarmed about. Here is a clip showing the fluctuations of ice coverage in the Arctic over a five year period. In September, the North Polar ice cap is at its smallest, and that minimum coverage 
has been getting smaller. It is at its maximum in March, and that coverage has actually been growing since 2006. The Antarctic ice has greater fluctuations than the Arctic, but it has been slowly increasing in coverage since 1979. Here is a chart from NASA showing the loss of ice coverage in the Arctic and the gain of ice in the Antarctic. Here are some excerpts from weather reports in 2008. Canada's National Post, February 25, 2008. Snow cover over North America and much of Siberia, Mongolia, and China is greater than at any time since 1966. The U.S. National Climate Data Center reported that many American cities and towns suffered record cold temperatures in January and early February. According to the NCDC, the average temperature in January was minus 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than the 1901 to 2000 average. China is surviving its most brutal winter in a century. CBC News, February 15, 2008. Satellite images are showing that the cold spell is helping the sea ice expand in coverage by about 2 million square kilometers compared to the average winter coverage in the previous three years. Greenland Sermisiak News, February 12, 2008. Denmark's Meteorological Institute states that ice between Canada and southwest Greenland right now has reached the greatest extent in 15 years. AccuWeather, February 6, 2008. Usually, the breakup of fast ice around the Antarctica Peninsula occurs in early to mid-December, but this area was solidly frozen well into January and the current southern hemispheric sea ice area is at 2.9 million square kilometers, which is about 400,000 square kilometers greater than the normal level expected for this time of year or slightly above normal. International Herald Tribune, January 21st, 2008. A report from Kilimanjaro. Patchy snow covered the upper slopes above approximately 18,500 feet. Snow blanketed the summit area a mile and a half wide and hemmed by glaciers. Uhuru, the highest point in all of Africa, was a 45-minute slog ahead. Verdict. If the Earth is getting warmer, it is not enough to worry about.